In a previous video, we looked at count-controlled while loops, but in this video, I want to look at event-controlled while loops. Count-controlled loops are really the domain of for loops. Where while and do while loops really shine is when they are event-controlled, meaning there isn't a fixed number of times that's going to run. It depends on the situation, and the situation is going to be ended by a certain event. And so in this video, I've given a task, write a program that sums the digits of a given integer and to use a do while loop in the implementation. I want to show you what this is and also why this is an event controlled scenario. So if I gave you three numbers, notice that they all have different digits inside of them. The first one has three digits, 13 has two digits, and 3140 has four digits. If I wanted to find the sum of the digits by adding up each individual digit, I'd run into the issue of where do I stop? The first time I'm going to stop at three, the second time I'm going to stop at two, and the last time I'm going to stop at four because that's how many digits they have. If I don't know how many digits a number has, it's a perfect scenario for a do while loop. So here's an example of what I'm doing. I'm adding the digits together, three, two, one, and I'm going to get six. Notice I'm starting at the end of the number or with the three as opposed to starting with the one. If I was going to do 13, it would be three plus one is four. And if I did 3,140, it would be zero plus four plus one plus three is equal to eight. So let's see how we can do this using a do while loop. I've broken the process down into steps and we're going to use an algorithm on the left, which is really just a step-by-step -step instruction on how to accomplish this task. So we start with the number one, two, three. Well, what do we want to do first? We want to isolate the rightmost digit. How do we accomplish this? We take the number and we modulously divide by 10. Anytime you take a number and modulously divide it by 10, it's going to isolate the rightmost digit. And in this case, the number would be three. The second step is to add the rightmost digit to the sum. And so I've created a variable at the top called sum, which is initialized as zero. And so we're going to say three plus zero is of course three. Now the next step is going to remove the rightmost digit. Why would I want to remove the rightmost digit? So I could repeat the process again and find the rightmost digit, which instead of being three would now be two. How do I do this? I simply take the number and divide it by 10. So if I took 123 and divided by 10, I would get 12. And then the last step of this algorithm is really just a combination of the first three steps. We're going to repeat steps one through three until the number reaches zero. And you might have noticed or thought about a problem in step number three. And that is, how can I take a number divided by 10 and not get a decimal? Well, you have to remember that we're dealing with integer division. So we start with 123 and divide it by 10. Both are integers. So if you take an integer and divide it by an integer, you're not going to get a double you're going to get an integer, and it's just going to truncate the decimal place, meaning it's going to lop it off. It doesn't care if it's a 0 0.9, 0 0.1, no matter what it is, it doesn't care. It's just going to be dropped off. So that's how we get 12, one, and zero, which is exactly what we want in order to accomplish our goal of adding or summing together the numbers. Steps one and two would look something like this. We would start with one, two, three, if we modulously divided by 10 on 123, it would give us three. If we modulously divided by 10 on 12, it would give us two. And if we modulously divided by 10 on one, that would give us one. And if we were adding the numbers as we went, the result would be six. So hopefully now you can understand the algorithm and let's see how this would work with a do while loop in the code. So what I've done is I've created three variables the num, which is 123, the sum, which is our goal to sum up the individual digits, and I've created a third variable called onum, which is going to stand for original number. We'll see why we need that a little bit later in the program. So I've created my do while loop, and I have my algorithm help on the right. The first thing that I want to do is isolate the rightmost digit. I do that by taking num and modulously dividing it by 10. Next, I want to take that right digit and add it to the sum. Next, we're going to remove the rightmost digit by dividing by 10, because 123 divided by 10 would be 12. And then finally, we would repeat the steps until num is equal to zero. 
And as long as num is greater than 0, we know that we have digits left. But once it equals 0, we know that we've divided it so many times that the decimal place has moved over and over and over again till eventually all integer values would become 0. And that would be the event that causes the loop to stop. Lastly, what we'd want to do is print out the sum of the digits is sum. Now I want you to note that I put O num there. What would happen if I put num there? If we're continually dividing num by 10, eventually all integer values that were stored in num would become zero according to our algorithm. So we don't want it to say zero sum of digits is whatever the sum of digits are. We wanted to say, what was the original number, which is 123, the sum of the digits is six. So as we run the code, I've created a t-chart to keep track of num, the right digit, or rd, and the sum. So let's go ahead and run through this program and see how it works. First, we go to the do statement, which is going to enter into the loop. We're going to isolate the rightmost digit by taking num and modulously dividing by 10. And as we said earlier, we would get 3. We're going to add that to the sum. 0 plus 3 is 3. And then we're going to divide by 10. And as we showed you earlier, if we took 123 and divided it by 10, it would give us 12. Check the condition. 12 is greater than 0, so we continue on. Next, we would isolate the rightmost digit, which now, because num is 12, the rightmost digit is 2. So we're going to take that 2 and add it to sum. And so 3 plus 2 is 5, so therefore sum is now 5. We're going to lop off the rightmost digit, which is the 2. And so now num is 1. 1 is greater than 0, so we continue on. Again, we're going to isolate the rightmost digit. Well, the rightmost digit is the only digit, and that is 1. And so we're going to take that digit, add it to sum, and so we get a sum of 6. And then we're going to divide the number by 10. And when we take 1 and divide it by 10, it's going to give us 0. There are no more digits left to add together. Therefore, we know the loop is finished, our event has been reached, and our condition is false. Num is not greater than 0 because it is 0. So therefore, we would print out our output, and it would say 1, 2, 3, sum of digits is 6, which is the correct output that we're going for. And hopefully you can see this would work with all integers not just the one, two, three that we gave as an example. Let's sum up about event control do while loops. It's important to note that an event controls the loop, not a counter. We weren't counting up to a certain value. We were just saying when we're done with the individual digits, we know that the loop is done. It's kind of like a login on a computer. We only know that the loop is done when someone has entered in the correct password. And then, and only then, will the program continue on. Let's talk a little bit about the algorithm that we used inside of this video. An individual digit of an integer can be isolated by modulously dividing it by 10. That's going to give us the rightmost digit. An integer can be truncated by one digit by dividing it by 10. And all digits have been reached when a number reaches 0. This was the event on which we based our loop on. Looping is an important tool in Java. The for loop is built for count controlled situations and the while and do while loop, which we looked at in this video, are built more for event controlled situations. So if you have an event controlled situation, you want it to run at least once, the do while loop is the structure you wanna use. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.